Now adding formic to this login page is super easy. Let's take a look at how you can validate these input text boxes using formic. So if you click on tutorial, when you scroll down, you will have the validation section. Right here, you can see how you can validate the input of the user. What you have to do is, you have to pass a property use formic which is validate and this is a type of function. Now because the function name and the property name is same, that is why here we just have validate. And inside this function, you can access the values of your input text boxes. So let me just create this function right inside this use for me hook. So I'm going to back to the login.js and right up here, you can see here I have the for make hook. And inside this for make hook, you have to pass here a property called validate this one. And then to this property, you specify a function. So you pass here a colon and specify a function here, something like this. And then inside this function, you can access the values of your input text boxes. So just pass here values. That's upon you. You can specify any name to this parameter. That's it. Using this function, you can validate your input text boxes. But instead of adding this function right here, because we have multiple input text boxes. So instead of adding this function right here as an arrow function, I'm going to create a new file and specify all the validation inside that file. Inside this project right here, I'm going to create a new folder first. And then I'm going to specify name to it, lib library and here i'm going to create a file validate.js now that's upon you you can specify any name to this file inside this file i'm going to export a default function and the function name is login validate and you get all the values of your input text boxes as a parameter so you pass here values and then you pass this login validate to this validate property right something like this and now what you have to do is you have to first import this so right up here i'm going to say import again validate from the lib validate just out of that inside this validate right here you have to create an object you have to say here constant errors is equal to and pass an empty object here now this object indicates that you don't have any error inside your form and then right down here i'm going to say if we don't have values inside the input text boxes, then I'm going to return an error message. So I'm going to say here, if, if we don't have values inside email, I'm going to access the email property of this values. And then here I'm going to say, if I don't have email, then I'm going to say here errors dot email. And then I'm going to return here required message. So if you leave your email text box blank, then I'm going to return this error message. And then I'm going to check the email format. So if you back to the documentation, then you can notice here, you have this code here for this email. I'm going to just copy all this code and then specify that right here. So I'm going to first check if we don't have email, then return required message to this error. Else if I'm going to say if the format of the error is not valid, then I'm going to return this message in valid email address. Let's do the same thing for the password. So right down here, I'm going to say validation for password. And here I'm going to say if I don't have values dot password, then I'm going to say here errors dot password. And I'm going to say here equal to sign and say here required. Just out of that, I'm going to say here else if. And then here I'm going to check for the second condition. If the password is less than eight character and greater than 20 character, then I'm going to return the error message. So inside this if statement, I'm going to say if the values dot password dot length, if it is less than eight characters or if values dot password dot length, if it is greater than 20 characters, then I'm going to return error message. So I'm going to say here errors dot password is equal to and here I'm going to say must be greater than eight and less than 20 characters long now just after that i'm also going to say here else if if the values dot password it is include empty string or you can say empty space then i'm going to return an error message so i'm going to say here dot includes and then i'm going to pass here white space something like this so if you have any space in your password i'm going to return this error message and i'm going to return here errors dot password is equal to invalid password and then at the end you have to return this error save this 
save this back to the login save this file and now if i type here email password when i click on the login button i'm not going to get anything this is because i have an error inside this input text boxes to see the error you can just print here console.log formic dot errors save this file back to the project and you can see you're going to get an error that the password must be greater than 8 and less than 20 character long and now if you remove this at the red sign from this email you can see you're going to get another error which is invalid email address and you're also going to get the password error in the same object so until you have empty object inside this error this on submit won't execute because formic is not going to call this on submit until you have empty object inside this errors property so instead of console.log inside your form right down here just out of this email just out of this spawn tag right down here you can simply call here curly braces and say formic dot errors dot email and then if you have error here then print a spawn tag otherwise return nothing so inside the spawn tag you can simply print formic dot errors dot email let me copy this and do the same for the password so just out of this spawn tag right down here i'm going to say formic errors dot password and i'm going to change this value as well this became password let me save this back to the project reload it and if i type something here you can see when i type something here i'm going to get an error message invalid email address and the password is also required you can move these messages wherever you want that's upon you so i'm going to just grab these messages and print that just after this division tag so if the email is not valid you will get this invalid email address error and if you want to specify some styling to it you can specify here class name and then specify here text rows 500 this will specify color to this message you can do the same for this password message now let me reload the page and whenever i type something here i'm going to get all the error messages since the validation function runs on each keystroke against the entire form's values it's not a great user experience for them formic keeps track of which fields have been visited store this information in the object called touch that's also a mirror of the values so what i want when i finish typing if there is an error i want to display that error otherwise i don't want to return anything so just out of this condition here i'm going to say and formic dot touch dot email and let me do the same thing for the password so right down here i'm going to say at the rate and formic touch password back to the project reload it and now if i type something you can see i'm not going to get any error once i finish typing and move to the next text box then i'm going to get this error message you can see so the formic is going to validate your input text boxes when you move to the other object 